Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I wanted to do a quick walk through or walk around the 64 Impala. It's done. It's going to be leaving here hopefully in a day or two. We'll see what happens uh, whenever they come and pick it up. Um, I did a light buffing on the top of the car and the top of the uh, fender's door and quarter panel. Nothing below the top molding got wet sanded and buffed. Um, I used a six inch DA sander. I started with 1500 grit, 2000, 3000, and then I jumped to 8000. And then I buffed it with two different compounds. It looks pretty darn good. I didn't go crazy with it. I didn't knock out all the orange peel or anything like that. There's still a slight orange peel in it, which is nice. That clear that I used was that color and clear off of eBay. It was like $400 shipped for the whole kit, which was a gallon of clear, gallon of paint, reducer, and hardener for the clear. And I believe that paint is a two to one mix. So it makes a gallon makes a gallon and a half sprayable, which was plenty, it's convertible. And I still had enough left to probably have done the roof. It would have been really close, but I think I could have gotten it. Um, I probably would have, if I was painting a hard top, I probably would have maybe based the car with an old blue powder blue that I had left over. Maybe I would have sprayed the first coat of that on there and then went over it with the right stuff just to make sure that that gallon was gonna be enough. I'm still recovering from knee surgery. Today has been what, 10th day or so since I've been out. Uh, it's healing, it's uh, getting there. It's gonna take a while. Um, and then I have to go back to the doctor for an MRI and possibly another surgery, all depending if they can fix my cartilage or not. Not sure about that yet. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. Um, I'm going to be doing cars and arcade games full time. So there's gonna be a lot of content and a lot of videos that I plan on posting. So hopefully you guys are interested and like to see a bunch of different cars I'll be working on. Um, I know I have a couple 64 Impalas coming. Uh, I know for sure I have a 64 Impala convertible coming, a real good friend of mine. Uh, it was a show car for years and years. Um, it's been in a ton of magazines. It has hydraulics on it, but the flame, frame is shot now. It's getting a new frame built in Canada for it. It's going to put the hydraulics back on the car. But we're going to do, originally when the car was done, probably 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, every bit of that, um, they didn't have one piece floor pans back then. It was, you got your right side, your left side, and they were all like individual pieces. So we're going to cut out the whole floor. It is a convertible, so we're at the brace it. We're going to cut the whole floor out and drop in one whole new floor pan as one piece. Um, so we're going to sandblast underneath it, a whole new floor pan. Going to strip the whole body down, redo the whole body, um, and get it ready so that he can roll his new frame underneath it. Uh, so that's coming in that towards the end of April. Um, this 59 Impala is going to be leaving, hopefully, fingers crossed, in the next two weeks. That'll be out of here by the end of February. Then I'm going to jump on this uh, white dually pickup. So there'll be a bunch of videos on that. That's a pearl white paint job. So if anybody wants to see me spray a pearl white paint job and what's involved in that, you know, make sure you guys uh, watch, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Um, after I get that done, that Impala will be coming. So I'll be working on that 64 Impala and another 59 Impala at the same time. I have another 59 Impala back there that I'm, I gotta do for a guy and it is a two door hard top. So that also needs done. About a year ago, I did all the body panels, the fenders, the doors, hood and trunk lid and the balances and stuff. They've all been stripped to bare metal already. They've all been body worked and they're in a gray single stage paint. I put them in a gray single stage paint because I had to put a hold on the car for a little while. I didn't want the primer to be sitting back there because what happens is if you leave a 2K primer sitting in the open, because it's not concreted back there yet, you'll get moisture underneath it and it'll start rusting. So I just put everything in a single stage gray paint just to seal it up until I got back to it. So basically I need to get the body in here and get the quarter panel stripped down. Um, I'm gonna clean the underbody. I'm not gonna take it off the frame, but I am gonna clean the underbody and um, repaint all that underneath there, like a satin black, just to clean it up, make sure it's all, you know, no rust or anything like that. Um, so that 59 and the 64 convertible will be next um, after this white pickup truck. And then uh, they're going to keep coming. I have a bunch of them lined up. I have a black Grand National that I'm going to be painting in, end of October. It's already in the schedule for that. 
Uh, I don't know what's involved with that. I think it's a pretty clean car. I think the paint's all faded out from being old. I don't know if we're gonna, my guess is we'll probably strip at the bare metal and uh, you know, work our way up from there. Uh, that I believe is getting the underbody and stuff. The owner is doing the underbody and stuff on that right now, I believe. I think he's pulling the frame off of it, sandblasting it and getting it powder coated and painting the floors. So when it comes here, I just need to worry about doing the body itself on that one. The 64 convertible, I have to do underneath and everything. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll probably sandblast the floors and everything, but the body and everything, I'll probably strip it with, uh, I actually just picked one of these up, if you guys are interested. Harbor Freight sells these, Eastwood sells these. It's a stripping wheel on a tool here, okay? The reason why I went with this, this is made by Summit, okay? They're all basically about the same price. I think I paid $129 for this. And then the extra wheels are expensive. They're like $30 a wheel for the extra wheels. But the reason why I got this one and I wanted this one versus the Eastwood and the Harbor Freight is it has a dust port because these things kick up a ton of dust. And it has a dust port here. So I'm gonna be able to hook it into my uh, vacuum that I use to sand cars with right to the hose. And I'm gonna be able to suck up, you know, at least half of the dust coming off of this so that if I'm stripping parts down, I usually like to do it outside. So if it's obviously springtime, summertime, and it's warm, I'm gonna do this outside, and I'll probably still hook the vacuum up to it just to keep the debris down, and I don't have to breathe it in. Even wearing a mask, this stuff gets all over you. So I'm anxious to see how this works. Um, I've watched some videos on YouTube on it. Uh, I believe Summit actually had a video on it. It looks like it's gonna work just fine. Um, so hopefully that works with the dust collection. The way that they have this like this, it, when it spins, there's an arrow on here. It spins this direction. And as it's spinning that way, it has a big port in there that turns into a round port. So hopefully that'll work good for that. We'll definitely be using that quite a bit. Um, let's go take a look at the 64 and then I'll end this video. I just figured I'd do a quick update on what's going on around here. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of content and hopefully you guys are interested in seeing it. Uh, so I usually don't buff out in the spray booth, but the spray booth is really dirty. I got to do a good cleaning on it and I might do a quick paint job on it as well before I paint that uh, white pickup truck, that pearl white. Probably going to scrub the floors, put a new coat of paint on the floors and probably just put one coat of paint on the walls just to clean them all up. I hung some plastic up there because I was buffing and I didn't want to get any uh, compound in my intake filters or anything like that. So here we go. Um, it's all together. Bumpers are crappy. It needs new bumpers. This is how it's going to stay. He's going to sell it like this. Um, and, you know, the next owner or whatever can do what they want with it. But it uh, turned out pretty nice. I mean, like I said, this is $400 a gallon of paint. And that includes the clear coat and the hardeners and the reducers. So, I mean, you really can't expect much more for $400. I mean, I think it looks pretty darn good. Obviously, I can only film it so good with my camera, but all inside the door jams are done and everything, so at least everything matches. Underside the trunk lid is done. We put new weather stripping on the doors, got bump stops on there. Jams turned out pretty good. Got a little bit of a scuff right there, but that's from this bump stop up here. Doors still shut a little bit hard. The weather stripping's not fully... Uh, um, compressed down yet still a little bit of dust on the car but it is what it is this door i don't know if this one's a little bit harder or not to shut but no it's actually not too bad. um i put the wheel skirts inside because i'm missing the clips that um hold them to the quarter panel there's one there i'm missing the front clip it was gone when that quarter panel was routed out if you guys remember when i um uh, fix these uh, quarter panels. Both back clips are there, but I'm missing the two front clips. So he, I, I'm sure he has some that he can throw on there. But uh, that's pretty much it. This one is ready to leave. Maybe I'll do a quick, uh, a short video of it when it's sitting outside. Maybe it'll, uh, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So now I get to go back onto this and finish up what I need to do. I, I did get this molding here for here. I need to polish it. So once I get it polished, I can put it on. I can get the vent window in. Um, I do have new glass for the vent windows. I didn't realize that I did, but I do have new glass. So I need to take the glass out of that side, which means that I drop down the motor 
and then there's a screw at the top and then that glass will come out and then i have the new glass which comes with the metal around it so basically once i unbolt that motor out of here take the screw out out here i can slide this piece of glass out and, get, and put the new one in because this one the glass looks really good until you open it and the edge is delaminating so we don't want to have that so that's ready i need to fix the fans were not coming on on this motor because I had the wrong sensor in here for the fans to turn on. So I put this new fitting in here and it's dripping. So I need to take it back apart and see why the heck this fitting is dripping up here. Or maybe I just never tightened it all the way. So I got to check that just to tighten it down a little bit more. But uh, all right, guys. Well, that's going to end this video. Nothing real crazy. Just figured I'd show you and tell you what was going on. And hopefully you guys are liking this stuff and are interested in seeing more. Please like, subscribe, share. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I'll see you guys later.